We will now begin this special session co-organized with Harvard Neiman Foundation. Let's see who our first speaker will be. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce our moderator, deputy curator of the Harvard Neiman Foundation, James Geary. Please give him a big hand. Good afternoon. Thank you all uh, for coming to this uh, session. And I'd like to give a special thank you to the organizers of the SBSD Forum for inviting the Neiman Foundation for Journalism at Harvard to take part and to be with, uh, with you all here this afternoon. The D in SBSD Forum stands for digital, for data, for diversity, and for democracy. And during this session, we will be exploring all four of those topics in our discussion titled Communication and Community, How Journalism Can Engage Citizens in Constructive Debate. I'd like to start um, with a consideration of the image behind me. It's a painting called The Sun, Moon, and Five Peaks, probably painted in the late 19th or early 20th century, and it's located right here in Seoul at the National Palace Museum. These types of paintings were common during the Choson Kingdom from the 1300s to the late 1800s, and they were always placed behind the king's throne. Uh, this particular artistic style has several different names in Korean, and I'm going to try and pronounce one of them. Ilwong Obongdo. Uh, judging by your laughter, I did not pronounce that correctly. So, um, but the elements in each painting are the same. The sun, the moon, and the five mountains. The sun and the moon symbolize the king and the queen, uh, maybe the empire and the state as well. And the landscape with its five mountains washed by the sea, fed by two gushing rivers, symbolizes the territory of Korea. The king would sit directly in front of the painting at its center, an image of social balance and political unity. It's a beautiful painting, a remarkably harmonious picture of an idealized socio-political state. But of course, today, South Korea looks nothing like this painting. Nor does the United States, the United Kingdom, the countries of Europe, China, Japan, the Philippines, and most other nations in the world. Instead, the socio-political landscape we currently inhabit is remarkably discordant and far from ideal. Our sun and moon don't represent king and queen or empire and state, but conservatives and liberals. The Liberty Korea Party and the Democratic Party of Korea, Fox News, and CNN. These pairs are not held in beautiful balance, as in the painting. They are polarized and far apart. Those rivers don't contain clear, fresh water, but a st steady stream of mis- and disinformation, flowing into a sea of partisanship and mistrust. And those mountains don't merge into a single integrated landscape. They remain remote, isolated peaks, insulated from opposing points of view. Now, if we were to make this painting today, we would have to depict a landscape in which the sun and moon have kind of swung wildly out of alignment. Powerful currents of mis- and disinformation are eroding trust in political institutions and the media. And citizens are disengaged from each other and from civil discourse. So what we're going to explore in this session is what journalism and non-fiction storytelling more generally, as well as social media, can do to restore some sense of connection and community in these polarized times. And we're going to do this with the help of four extraordinary thinkers and practitioners. First, we will hear from Kareem Ben Khalifa, a photojournalist known for his images of war and conflict, especially from Iraq and the Afghan wars. Kareem's frustration with conventional war photography led him to develop The Enemy, uh, an immersive installation that uses virtual reality to bring audiences into contact with soldiers from opposite sides 
of long-standing conflicts. Um, we then hear from Ethan Zuckerman, who um, works at the MIT um, Media Lab in Cambridge. And Ethan is working on a, um, uh, using social media to focus on tools for positive change, to promote freedom of expression and fight censorship. As tech platforms are increasingly criticized for creating ideological echo chambers and spreading misinformation, Ethan asks a simple but potentially transformative question. What if social media was redesigned so it was good for democracy? One possible answer, go bo social, an experiment in giving users more control over their social networks, thereby making societies stronger and more resilient. Next is Eve Perlman, a veteran journalist and found, founder of Spaceship Media, which uses something called dialogue journalism to bridge divides and rebuild trust in the news. In partnership with news outlets, Spaceship Media facilitates conversations about immigration, gun control, race, public education, in communities in conflict, with journalists augmenting those conversations with factual information. The goal for people to engage respect respectfully in fact-based debate rather than remain mired in inaccurate partisan perceptions. Finally, Young Min, a professor in the School of Media and Communication at Korea University, will speak about her research into communication and trust, specifically how media converge, how media coverage of social conflicts can either promote informed debate or heighten partisan conflict. Professor Min's research has shown how better conversations result when the media frames social issues around possible solutions rather than around intractable con confrontations. And she found this to be true even of moderated conversations on Kakao Talk, South Korea's most popular messaging platform. Her work demonstrates that when properly framed and moderated, social media conversations on divisive issues can still produce, as she puts it, the sense of being in the world with others. So we will hear from each of our four presenters in turn, and then they will all return to the stage to join me for a group discussion. The ideas, projects, techniques, and research they will share today may not get us back to the state of social harmony depicted in the sun, moon, and five peaks, but that state probably never existed in the way that is shown in the painting anyway. But restoring the ability and the willingness to communicate across social and political fault lines is definitely something worth striving for. As Ethan Zuckerman has said, if we want social media that increases diversity, creates a space for civil discourse, we have to build it. At the very least, we need to build the environment where it can happen. Our four speakers today are trying to do exactly that, contributing to the collective creation of a painting for our own times in which not the king, but an informed, diverse, democratic citizenry is at the center of the landscape. To start the conversation, please welcome Karim Ben Khalifa. <laughs> 